Hello and welcome everyone, Lanhart here, and today I've got a review of the Steel Series Rival 500 MOBA slash MMO gaming mouse. So, Steel Series sent this over to me a while back, and I finally got round to kind of making my review, sharing my thoughts and impressions about the mouse with you guys, letting you know about the changes that Steel Series have brought in with this mouse, as opposed to, I guess, more traditional uh, MMO and MOBA. Um, orientated gaming mice. So the biggest change that you will notice is the layout of the buttons on the left hand side of the mouse. It's obviously a right handed uh, mouse and traditionally for an MMO mouse you would see something like say the Naga, uh, the Razer Naga with a grid um, styled button layout on the left hand side buttons 1 through to 12 um, which obviously you can bind all your abilities uh, both for MMO, for MOBA, or, you know, I've, I've used the Naga for just playing Total War and, and RTS. Um, I'm kind of, I'm a bit lazy when it comes to mice. I just like to find one that will suit all my needs, and often that's the one with the most buttons on. Um, so that's why I've been previously using a Razer Naga, but since SteelSeries sent over the Rival 500, I've been using that as my daily driver mouse, as it were. So... SteelSeries have done away with that grid pattern and opted instead to go for what they feel are the more intuitive um, kind of motions and movements and controls that you'll use your thumb for on the side of the mouse. So rather than having that grid layout, they've gone for six buttons that you can roll down to with your thumb, roll up to, roll back, and kind of just press in with the kind of um, lower part of your thumb. And... This is something I've certainly seen like the bottom buttons and the top buttons on other mice before, um, but never kind of all set together as Steel Series have with the Rival 500 here. And to me, it makes a great deal of sense. In fact, it makes more sense than having set buttons because it took me a very long time with the Razer Naga to get used to just pressing in the um, grid buttons 1 through to 12 for the various abilities I wanted. It just didn't feel as natural as I'd like it for a mouse control. I often felt my, found myself just going back to the keyboard and pressing abilities up there, which I'm sure many MMO gamers will um, facepalm over the kind of lack of efficiency that that will have uh, in terms of timing for my abilities, especially in MOBAs as well. Um, play a fair bit of Dota as well. I'm awful at Dota, I should say, but I enjoy playing it. Um, so I guess any advantage, any reduction on um, kind of, I guess, speed to activating my ability, I could certainly benefit from. So yeah, Steel Series have gone for this different layout for what I feel, and I agree with them, is a more, um, more responsive, more natural um, input method for your thumb. You can roll down to the two buttons at the bottom, kind of roll your thumb back for the two buttons at the back, and you can roll your thumb up to reach the two buttons at the top. So you have six on the side there, and the other nine are all dotted around on the top of the mouse. Fairly standard layout for the buttons on the top, two on the left, one on the right. Your scroll wheel acts as three buttons, pressing it in, left and right, left and right mouse clicks, and then you have uh, the DPI or CPI um, switch button as well. And uh, what this mouse also brings to the table is um, tactile feedback. Um, which, again, for the MMO MOBA design, and it's certainly supported by a few games already, and you can set up custom timers as well to notify you of cooldowns, of when your health's low, um, if your mana's low, and they have placed the motor for that right back um, in the kind of palm of the mouse, so it won't affect uh, tracking, and I haven't found it uh, affect tracking at all. I haven't really used the tactical feedback as much um, as I thought I would, um, it's a nice little feature to have playing a bit of Dota and you know getting a little you can set the custom pulses or, or, or vibrations and the feedback through the rear of the mouse there and it works um, pretty darn well it's, it's a nice little addition to have obviously if you don't want it you can you know disable those timers and what have you nice little addition and the customization through the Steel Series software is pretty solid um, as well um, it has all the various options you need the only thing I'm slightly disappointed in, and I guess maybe you, you probably don't need it because, again, this is aimed at MMO and MOBA, um, but for me, kind of, that wants a mouse that can just do every type of game really easily, I would have preferred if they had more than just two sensitivity levels for the CPI. They only have two that you can just switch between. That said, that said, 
at least from my own experience, there's probably only maybe two, maximum like three different sensory levels that I go through, but I'm sure that... I just wanted to mention this because I know some people would like to have like five or six different levels that they can switch through depending on the game they're playing. So it only does support two. Um, but... I said, I often find myself only using two settings anyway. You've got RGB controls for your logo and for the mouse wheel, which you can set to, you know, the standard options are all there. Color shift, um, you know, steady color. You can rotate it through uh, various other colors and what have you. Uh, it, it does all, all the standard lighting options are there. I mean, because lighting is now such a standard thing for most gaming peripherals, you have all the options there, and it's all presented nicely through the SteelSeries uh, Engine 3 software. Very easy to use, very easy to add in uh, timers if you need to, and to just tweak, customize, activate, deactivate extra buttons. Uh, the other um, kind of, I guess, not really a button, but a switch, in fact, that I should show you guys is on the bottom of the mouse, which... Um, as you can see, has a, a green marker, or if you move the switch up, a red marker. What that does is actually disables the two bottom um, buttons on the left-hand side of the mouse, creating an instant uh, thumb rest for you. Um, so that's that's quite nice, especially. And I found myself turning that on when I would go to play Total War or FPS games. Something that this game, you know, this mouse isn't, um, you know, branded for, as it were, but it certainly can be used for those. Um, I often found myself um, creating that thumb rest as well when I wanted to, to play Dota a little bit because I could map all my other abilities nicely onto the side of the mouse with the remaining buttons um, quite easily. But for playing things like WoW or Guild Wars, um, you know, just switch um, that back up to or switch the lock down so that you can use those extra buttons underneath. And uh, yeah, I, I like that they've included that and they've, they've, they've done it in a way that just makes sense. It's just a little switch. That's all it needed to be. And it works quite well. In terms of the design, it does fit like a glove, and quoting many another reviewer here, um, it is very comfortable to use, very ergonomic, and I think actually the look as well, it looks, it's got some pretty nice angles to it as well, which you wouldn't normally necessarily associate with an ergonomic, fits like a glove mouse, but it feels very comfortable in the hand, uh, not had any issues in the months that I've been using this mouse, and uh, yeah, been been an absolute pleasure to to hold and to battle my enemies with. Um, I will agree with some other reviewers here, as I always like to check out what other reviewers have said to you know kind of bounce off um, either their criticisms or, or things that they liked and, and kind of share my own input on that. And that is initially when I got this, I didn't actually think it was that big of a mouse, but after using it for a little for, for, for you know a few months, a couple of weeks or so. Um, it, it is it is a big mouse. I've certainly used bigger. It's not the largest mouse I've ever used, um, but it is it is a big mouse. Uh, I have an average sized hand. Um, I'd like to think it's not particularly a tiny hand or a large hand. Normal normal sized hand, and it, and it fits perfectly fine. I've seen one two reviews saying that they you know they didn't feel like it, it it fitted that well, but I don't really know what they're talking about because. Um, you know, average sized hand. I can even see for a larger hand as well wouldn't be a problem. Smaller hands. Maybe, but I mean, you would have to have proper tiny hands, I think, for this to be an issue because all the the spacing of the buttons are are quite logically um, placed that you can reach it with you know hands of all shapes and sizes. There's dotted grip on both the right hand side for your fingers to grip there, and a little bit of a dotted kind of a rubberized a textured grip on the left hand side as well for your mouse just to kind of, for your thumb rather to grip this the uh, the left hand side of the mouse there quite nicely especially when you're not using that thumb rest but uh, yeah, overall the the design of the mouse i think actually looks quite well should say sensitivity wise this will go up to one uh, to 16000 cpi um, all the buttons are rated at 30 million clicks um, and can cover 300 inches per second so it is a pretty sharp mouse. The optical sensor is solid. I've not had any tracking issues. And overall, for a mouse that kind of challenges the very traditional grid layout, I think it's done it very well. And I think actually them saying, you know, obviously they're aiming at the MOBA MMO market, but really this is a mouse that can fit into, I would say, pretty much any, uh, you know, gaming uh, scenario that you could need. I've used this for Battlefield. I've used this for Total War. I've used this for you know, role-playing games, everything I have thrown this mouse at, it, it, you know, it, it's had, it's just had the, you know, enough options for me to utilize it, I think, to the full in, in any, in any situation, and, um, 
I think it's a very solid mouse from that. So, are there any negatives, Lionheart? Because you seem to like this mouse a lot. Well, I don't think there's, there's too much with it. There's obviously um, no weight controls, and I would have preferred that. In mice around this price point, there are um, plenty that offer weight control. I mean, it is a relatively, relatively weighty mouse. It's not the heaviest, but it is a relatively weighty mouse. Again, because of that size, because of all the buttons that they've, they've put on here, in, you know, intuitive places, um, for sure, uh, it is a larger, heavier mouse, uh, and unfortunately there is no weight control to that. I wouldn't, I would have preferred that. Um, little, real random bit at the back, they've actually included um, on their website, you can actually 3D print your own kind of custom nameplate. By default, it just says Rival at the back, but uh, if you're super into your 3D printing, you know, you like branding your own gaming peripherals, you can just add your own little bit there if you have access to 3D printing. Uh, and what have you, Steel Series don't sell those separately. Um, I guess just a nice little nod there to the kind of growing 3D printing community. Um, if you'd like to, if not, you've got it saying Rival on the back, and I, you know, don't have any issue with that. I would prefer if the the cable on the mouse was braided. It is just a standard kind of plastic rubber um, cable that that you know goes off to the USB head, which has a little note on it just telling you where you can download the software, which is always a nice touch. But yeah, I think that the cable is the only thing that kind of doesn't reflect the rest of the mouse's great quality. A nice braided cable, I think, would be would be an improvement there. But uh, by and large, not much to actually dislike about this mouse. I've seen one or two other reviewers mention that they felt it had a steep learning curve. I really don't think that's the case. As I said, the controls feel far more intuitive and just natural to just roll your thumb down to activate the various buttons or roll up or roll back than pressing buttons 1 through to 12 on a more traditional MMO mouse. So I don't agree with that at all. I should say there are no onboard uh, memory profiles or anything like that, but everything can be synced up to the Steel Series engine kind of cloud and then downloaded to whatever machine you plug the mouse in with you. So your your settings and profiles can still kind of travel with you just via the Steel Series cloud. But that's pretty much everything I've got to say on this. Obviously, pricing retails at £74.99 on Amazon UK and $79.99 on Amazon US. And for what it offers, it's kind of in line with many other MMO and MOBA mice. Um, for that price, though, as I said, I would have liked to see some weight control and just, you know, just a few little tweaks here and there with that. But overall, this is a very enjoyable uh, mouse to use. And if you're looking for something that is MMO, MOBA orientated, that doesn't have that kind of traditional um, thumb grid of buttons on the left hand side, or if you're bored or tired of, uh, you know, that grid and you're looking for something that perhaps is a bit more versatile, so you don't have to maybe use multiple mice all the time. Um, if, if you're a gamer that you know likes to swap their mice between different games, then this actually might be a reasonable option for you. Again, with that with that lock at the bottom to be able to lock those bottom buttons out so that you can um, you know create a thumb rest. I think that's a really good choice that Steel Series have gone for with this. Be very interested to see if they continue this sort of design going forward. Um, in future iterations, and I guess we'll have to wait and see. So that's what I'm going to wrap up for now. But I'd like to hear your thoughts. Are you pro the you know the the traditional button grid, or would you be more open to something that features a more intuitive uh, and I think just a better control system overall with just using your thumb to shift down, shift up, shift back. It has everything you need in, I think, a, a far more accessible um, layout for many more games than just traditional MMO and MOBA layouts. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this review. If there's any other bits of PC tech, peripherals, gaming hardware and all that you'd like me to review next, then feel free to let me know in the comment section and I'll do my best to provide. So until next time, guys, hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, take pride on the Legion. Check out my affiliates and sponsors, XMG, Green Man Gaming and Overclockers UK. Until next time, ciao for now.